Hey guys, how you doing today? Thanks for coming back. This is episode number three of my Aurora HDR 2018 tutorial. Episode one and two covered some of the basics and we're gonna keep going and going and going and I hope that it helps, so thanks for coming back. Uh, today we're gonna talk about two different subjects. The first one's gonna be details and the second one's gonna be colors. So on the details portion of this video, I'm gonna walk you through three different ways of adjusting and enhancing details in your photos. And then in the color section, I'm gonna give you six different ways that I use color and work with color in Aurora HDR 2018. So let's get started, my friends. All right, okay, so we have this image here, and this is, um, if you can't tell, we're gonna be talking about details because this is a very detailed scene, um, but it's about to get more detailed. So there's really three basic tools that I use to adjust details in Aurora. The first one is HDR Enhance, which is in the HDR Basic um, filter. There's HDR Structure, and then there's HDR Details Boost. Now, all three of these are useful. You can use them in tandem, or you can use them individually, and uh, they all have a different effect on the photo. So let's take a closer look. HDR Basic Panel, HDR Enhance. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this all the way to the right just to make the example, and I'm gonna zoom in as well. I think that'll help. I might zoom in a little bit more. Let's take a look at the wall and the chair. So let me show you the before. That would be that. See the before, it's just a base HDR photo, right? Uh, by the way, this is an abandoned prison that's now a tourist facility outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's really freaking cool. And if you shoot HDR, it's it's well worth the visit. It's it's all this kind of stuff for uh, for a couple of hours. So you kind of go crazy. It's, it's a bit of a HDR kind of urbex heaven. Anyway, so, and there's the after. So what does HDR Enhance do? It basically brings up the details and textures in a photo, but it does it in an intelligent way. So as you can tell, the details are not over the top. It's not crazy, crispy, you know, oh my God, HDR kind of look. It's kind of subtle. And by the way, if you haven't noticed, I'm all the way at 100 with this slider. So it's a great slider. It's the replacement for clarity, which was in the previous versions of Aurora. So if somebody says, where's the clarity slider? There ain't one. Uh, it's HDR enhanced now. It's a great slider, I use it on all my images, and the great thing is, and you can't tell in this photo because there's no sky or water, but even when you drag it really far to the right, it doesn't jack up the stuff uh, and create artifacts where you don't want them. So it doesn't mess up skies and all that. It's really wonderful, so that's number one. Number two is HDR structure. Now this one can get really crispy and really create a whole lot of sort of intensity in your photos, kind of what I consider the classic HDR look. So once again, I'm gonna drag it all the way to the right. You can see the before and after structure, right? So you can see it, it creates a tiny bit of noise, but I'm zoom, zoomed in 200%. That's okay, especially in an image like this. I don't really care. I'm not gonna run noise reduction. Uh, softness, if you drag this all the way to the right, as you see, it'll soften up the image, and all the way to the left will create a little bit crispier image. And boost, as the name implies, if you drag it to the right, it boosts up the intensity of that filter. I'm gonna reset that as well, and I'm gonna reset that. Now there's microstructure in here, and as you can see, those are the finer details, so it really pays attention to the smaller stuff. I would probably use these two in combination, and as you can see, as I'm zoomed in here, the photo's getting kind of crispy and crunchy, so it's, it's pretty intense. And again, softness does the same thing here as it does up here. So that's uh, method number two, HDR structure. Now we're gonna go to method number Three, which is HDR Details Boost. Um, I think of this slider as being sharpness. That's kind of how I think of it. So as you drag it to the right, you just get a crisper, sharper photo. And by the way, the details are basically divided into small, medium, and large. There's some of each in every photo. This photo happens to have a lot of small details. A lot of photos don't. Uh, medium is probably where I'd spend a lot of my time. But I'll admit, I don't use this slider a lot. I don't want to bring up too much detail. And I'm generally happy with what I get out of HDR Enhance and HDR Structure. Nonetheless, this is an important filter and a powerful one, so I want to cover it. Um, so as you drag these, you can see you start really getting into the different levels of detail in the photo. And I mean, look at that. You can really get some over-the-top kind of look um, in the scene, right? So pretty intense. Now protection, um, and again, this won't really show up so much in this photo, but protection essentially protects the highlights. Um, so there you go. I don't know if you can kind of tell, maybe a little bit on these white parts, but it effectively is designed to protect the highlights, which is great. And then the masking. So let me just drag this to the right. 
That'll soften up the details. And if you go to the left, it'll really get crunchy. So what masking does is it sort of automatically divides the scene into different levels of uh, detail, different zones, if you will. And the, le the further you go to the left, uh, the fewer zones are going to be masked. In other words, the more intense and more detailed it's going to be, and vice versa, right? Go all the, all the way to the right, and notice I still have small, medium, and large all the way at 100, but I drag masking to 100, and I got a very gentle application of that filter. So, in fact, I would argue that you can barely even see that. So, um, I usually leave masking alone um, unless it's something that I really think I need. And, but again, this is not a filter I use a lot of, but it's a great filter, a powerful one, and one I recommend getting your arms around. So that's three different ways to adjust details. Now I'm gonna get another photo, I'm gonna be right back, and we're gonna talk about six different ways to adjust color. Be right back. Okay, welcome back, thanks for sticking around. This portion of the video is gonna be all about color. How do you enhance colors, what tools do you use to adjust them, and what are the differences? And so I'm gonna cover that now. There are six different things I'm going to talk about. So. Let's get started. The first one is in the HDR basic panel, and it's just these simple temperature and tint sliders. You can drag the temperature to the right to create a warmer look. This is a sunset. And you can drag temperature, in this case, to the right to give it a little bit more of that sort of pinkish kind of purple sky. Really, every photo is different. Um, this is basically a white balance adjustment, which you can see you have options here. You can adjust based on various sort of presets, for lack of a better word, that are built in. Now, I don't use those. I usually leave it as shot. You can also use the white balance temperature uh, picker, if you will, and you just come over here and you find something that you consider neutral. So maybe that, and then when you click it, it'll move the temperature and tint automatically to adjust the white balance to suit what you consider neutral, right? It uses that as the base. Um, I don't really ever do in either of those methods, the preset uh, choices or the, the neutral picker, if you will, because I don't really care. I'm kind of going for my own artistic view. And so I just move temperature and tint until I get something that I think looks great. And then I say, hey, I'm done. So that's number one, temperature and tint. Now the second one, of course, is the color slider. Uh, this one's, I think, pretty obvious. You can drag saturation and vibrance to your heart con heart's content and get all kinds of colors. Now, you may ask, what's the difference between saturation and vibrance? Saturation just uniformly drags everything, you know, it goes to 11, right? So uh, basically, saturation will bump up every color in the frame. Vibrance will take the more muted colors and give them a nice pop. And so it is different. I use them generally in combination, but many times um, I'm not messing with saturation very much at all, and I'm using more of the vibrance. So what I recommend doing is just experimenting and seeing what you like on your images. The other piece here to be aware of is color contrast. Now, let me show you what this does. Look at that. I mean, that's beautiful. It's very subtle. And I haven't even touched saturation or vibrance or any of these other filters. So let me show you the before and the after. Excuse me. <coughs> um, it basically, as the name implies, creates more contrast between colors. So when you have... Uh, two colors that are primary in a photo like this one, and they happen to be basically on opposite sides of the color wheel, the orange and the blue. This happens to be a really good example of how color contrast can be used to accentuate a photo. I didn't really plan it that way, but I'm kind of glad it worked out. Um, nonetheless, experiment with it, check it out. I think you'll like it. So that's number two. Number three is image radiance. Um, this may not be an initial, hey, I need to adjust colors, I'm gonna go to image radiance, but it works pretty well. So image radiance to me is, it creates, as you drag it, it creates a shadowy, kind of moody, what I like to call romantic sort of look to a photo. And I use it a lot, I love it. Um, with the new version of Aurora, you now have the shadow slider. So you can drag that to the right to offset some of those intense shadows that are coming. However, the reason I bring this up in the color section is because you have vividness and warmth. So as you drag vividness to the left, you can see you sort of lose some of the intensity, but as you drag it to the right, you get a really soft glow, kind of, uh, it's kind of like a saturation slider. You can see the before and after. And again, this is the only tool we've been using. All these other ones are turned off. Uh, in addition, you can warm it up or cool it off. So if you want more blue, you go that way. You want more kind of the yellow, you go that way. So that's another filter that I think is great for adjusting color. Again, experiment with the amount. You know, softness, you know, will increase or decrease kind of the visible detail. Uh, and brightness, of course, will 
uh, increase or decrease the uh, luminance, if you will. But the big thing for me here around color is the vividness and warmth. So check those out. So we've had temperature tint, we've had the color slider, we've had image radiance. Now we're gonna go to the tone curve. Now this one can get confusing. This is not a full tutorial on the tone curve and there's multiple pieces of it. There's these different colored dots. I'm just gonna click on these and show you that you can do a lot if you wanted. So a lot of people will create an S curve in a photo and you can do that here. You can see the impact I've had on the color. Now each of these has their own sort of color, um, uh, what, what I call it, colors that they affect, right? It has to do with the color wheel. And again, we're not going into that in detail, but the point is that you can do an S curve on any of these and create a bit of color contrast, some color intensity, and do some interesting things. You could come over here, make that a little uh, less intense, a little bit more blue, right? You can reset that. Maybe you go to red and you say, I want more red in the highlights because it's a sunset. The point is, and let me show you the before and after. Um, the point is, it, Tone Curve is a very powerful tool. I will do another, a separate video just on that uh, at some point, but it's a great way to adjust colors or to slightly enhance them. Maybe you've used some of these other tools and you want a slight bump, that's a great way to do it. So Tone Curve is number four. Number five is HSL. It stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance, which you can see here. Hue, as the name implies, is just what type of color are you getting? So in the blue, if you go to the right, you get more purple. If you go to the left, you get more aqua, right? So with the red, you get more of the kind of the pinky. If you go to the left and to the right, you get more of the orange. So you can change the hue, and of course, saturation's a big deal, right? So in this photo, I might come in here and adjust some of the reds, yellows, and oranges up and say, wow, look at that. And let me show you the before, right? Before and after. I've mostly impacted just the uh, the orange part of the photo because that's sort of the part of the colors that I'm working with. If I like the blue, I could come over here and say I want more blue, and as I drag that to the right, it gets more intense. Uh, and then the luminance. Luminance works really well in tandem with HS, uh, HNS because um, it will change the exposure value of that color. So let's say I want the blues to be brighter. I can just drag the luminance to the right. I can drag the saturation to the right and I have a more intense but brighter version of blue, right? Um, you can also do the same thing. You could say, I want a, a darker version of blue, and there's so much blue in the photo, I've basically, by taking it to zero, created a really high contrast version of that blue. So again, there's no rules for any of this. It's all seasoned to taste. Do what you like, experiment, have fun, but HSL is really powerful. I use, use it a lot, and I recommend it. So that's number five. And number six is color toning. So this is uh, also known as split toning, and it allows you to separate the highlights from the shadows and independently adjust the colors in each. So in this photo, I might change the hue to be kind of in the yellow area for the highlights and then drag the uh, saturation slider to the right, maybe go a little bit more orange. And let me show you the before and after. I've just impacted the highlights, which are primarily in the sky, although it picks up some where it's reflected in the water. Um, but that's a, a highlight adjustment. And then you can come over here and say, well, I want the shadows to be a little bluer. And so you can come over here and create that intense blue just in the shadows. And so you can see the before and after. I think it's a, a great filter. I use it a lot. You can also dial in the adjustments on the highlights and shadows and then come over here to amount and just say, yeah, I like it, but I don't want it at 100. I want it at about 50 or so. And then you can drag it down to reduce the intensity of both the highlights and shadows. And the balance slider allows you to say, well, I like more of the shadows color, so I drag it that way, or I might like more of the highlights color, so I drag it that way. I generally leave balance in the middle, and I generally leave amount at 100 because I adjust the intensity of those colors here with the saturation slider to get the look I want. Maybe something like that. There's a before, there's an after. Color toning, also known as split toning, super powerful. I love it, and that's reason, reason number six. So. There's uh, six different ways to adjust color, and before that, we had three different ways to adjust detail. I hope that that helps. If this video is helpful to you, please give me a like, leave a comment, share with your friends, and don't forget to hit the red subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the little bell next to that if you want to get notified when I post new stuff, which is pretty often. So that's it, my friends. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Adios.